Okay, so I wanted to make a short video here to show the new watt meter that I have in stock. I haven't had a chance to get them on my website yet. Um, I've been a little bit busy doing some radio work and stuff like that. So when you're a one-man show, sometimes it takes you a little bit to get things on. But I do have these. I got these in last week. So the box is, you know, a fairly decent size box. So it's going to tell you that the meter is a fairly decent size. So it comes with a manual and it has a cable for the, the backlight and the powered peak circuit. So it does have a powered peak circuit. So the cable that you get, it does have a perforated, like a, like a color coded wire. And I want to point out in the manual what that means because there's been a few guys that got these. Uh, not this one because I haven't sold this one yet, but the other one, the DG103 Max, which is their their powered peak digital power meter, which I've sold a lot of those and I've done really well with those. But I know some guys like analog, so this has the same cable that comes with it. There's been a couple customers, and one guy actually, he realized what he did and he you basically burn up the meter when you hook it up wrong. Uh, he bought another one like right away. So that was really uh, generous of them to do that, and I really appreciated them for that. But, you know, there's been guys throughout the time I've been carrying those meters that have done that. So I want to make a quick reference to what this gray banded wire means in relation to plugging it into your power supply. Okay, so here's our meter, and I apologize for the beeping, but I'm, I'm going to show you guys there's a reason for this. So if we look on the back of the meter, and you can see it has a nice backlight, and it has average and PEP and you can shut the backlight off if you don't want it on um, we'll get to more functionality of the meter in a minute so what I'm going to show you is the tip is positive so what does that mean it means that the positive lead must be connected to where the tip is positive going in the meter if you hook it up backwards you'll blow the meter up and uh, it's basically just a piece of garbage then you can throw it out um, they're really I mean yeah, you might be able to fix it, but most people aren't going to be able to do that, you know, unless you're really handy. And uh, you can see the wire here. I have my positive lead in the center pin. And this wire is the one with the gray marking on it. So that is going to be your positive lead. So you want to make sure that you connect that to positive. If we hook it up the other way, check continuity. We have no continuity there. What I have to do is obviously this is ground on the outside. So we'll take this and probe the outside. And now we have connection. So remember, positive tip means that the gray indicated wire is what you connect to your positive power supply source. If you have a wall ward of some sort that you plug into the wall, make sure as well that that has a positive tip because some do not it really just de it's dependent on that plug so you can never be too careful when you're hooking stuff up like this because one mistake and you know sayonara um, you could put a fuse on this even if you wanted to you could put a fuse on it and that might save yourself but still um, but I just wanted to cover that so now that's out of the way um, so this is the TX 101 a they do have various other options but I only got this one for now because I feel like most guys, you know, between this frequency and this frequency is where most people that buy things for me are going to operate. You have 20, 200, and 2,000. So you can see here um, the 20 watt scale is the very bottom, the 200 is the middle, and the 2,000 is the top. So it's pretty easy to, to follow what's going on. Um, what we're going to do here really quick is I'll just kind of show the other models and what they're offering. Um, they all have this look. I think they have a different color um, description though when it's the, the different models. So you can see here, um, some of them have lower power handling, of course, some of your, your VHF and UHF ones. The good thing about the one that um, the 1.6 to 525 megahertz is, it also has N-type connectors for your upper frequencies. And I know some guys don't care about that, but some guys do, and N-type connectors are better for your UHF frequencies and whatnot it's much less loss so you can easily see all the specifics there and everything of the models the one that we're talking about today is this one on the far left column it's center calibrated at 25 or sorry 
28.5 megahertz so that's where the calibration is done on this meter so um, as you go lower in the bands maybe it won't be quite as accurate because you know we're calibrated up on 10 meter but for the guys that are going to use this for like cb and stuff we should be pretty good obviously we have an accuracy of plus or minus 10 percent of full scale or better that's pretty much standard for any kind of meter like this so minimum power one watt so this will pick up low power uh, you know as low as a watt anyway so um there you go so don't hook your jumpers up backwards to this don't feed power into the antenna socket that will destroy the meter also uh there's just certain things that go without saying but people make mistakes people get something new they're in a hurry they screw it in wrong, they key up, and you will damage this meter, and it will not work for you if you hook it up backwards. So just don't do that, <laughs> and you'll be fine. So anyways, let's uh, let's show the meter. Um, what I'm going to do first is just keep it in the average setting. It's on 20 watts. I'm using this um, Texas Ranger top one here. Uh, we're going to put it in AM mode. Our off, off power is all the way up. So... We have about four watts and the meter says about four watts so that's good um what i'm going to do is unhook the the power plug on the back and what i'll do now is put this in pep mode without any power the meter does not work in pep mode so as you can see i'm transmitting and it's not registering that is normal so if for some reason you forget to turn on like a power supply that you might have this hooked up to or something and you got your radios going, but you don't have this power. You're not going to get any any power on PEP. Now on RMS, you will. It still works without power there. So as we can see, hello, hello. This isn't a big average power because it's not modified. It just has a good, clean audio. Um, so what I'm going to do now is plug this in. And if I can do that without having to turn around and look at it. There we go. All right, so again, you don't have to have the backlight on, but it's a nice backlight. It looks really good. Um, we'll go over to PEP, and I'll key up. I get about 4 watts is what we see. We're on my 50 ohm dummy loads. We shouldn't see any standing wave coming back, any reflected power. And now when I transmit, um, you can see we're going up there a little bit past 20, which is about right. I mean, this radio was about 20 25 watts on the peaks so you know it's working good just like a nice um analog cross meter would work so i, I don't see any issues with it i've been using this one on and off for the last week or so and uh, i like it there's nowhere to put it here i use the professional power meters here for my my business but um i found a spot on my personal setup for this and uh, when I get bored with using my other LP100 over there, I'll hook this up and use it just for the heck of it because I like how it looks. So I have a MFJ giant watt meter that I sometimes throw in line. I have an uh, Ameritron uh, AWM30B. I have an assortment of other meters that I throw in line just because I like them because I like how they look. I like the functionality of them. And I don't always care to run like the best of the best. So you know which i would say like probably this in my opinion is the best of the best for like measurement obviously the lp 500 700 yeah they're cool too but if you don't have a a, a test equipment thing or all this stuff like i have then yeah that's beneficial but for me it's not really so i wouldn't want that one so now we put it in the 200 watt scale and we can see here um in the 200 watt scale we're about four watts or so it's still showing and uh, now as we can see on the 200 watt scale as I talk it's uh, a little more less accurate per se because remember the calibration is at full scale so that's where you know you're not gonna really want to run a low power like this and use the 200 watt scale you have to use the scale that is proportioned to the power that you're running and that's the same with these meters if this meter had a peak circuit in it this meter is not going to be as accurate down in this level it's going to be more accurate up in here and that's depending on what watt meter element you use if you want to measure five watts 
and you put a 50 in here, you're not doing yourself any justice. You're better off putting a 5 watt, or if you want to measure 25 watts and you put a 25 watt, you don't put a 50 or a 100. That goes without saying. It's the same principle on this kind of meter. You're not going to measure a normal radio, CB radio power in a 200 watt scale. There's no point. So that's why I'm saying like, you're going to see a little less accuracy because of the fact of the power. Now it's not really that bad, but um, you know, as I can see at times it's still peaking over 20 and it was doing the same thing before. All I'm saying is use the scale that's going to give you the closest reading. So if you're doing 150 watts, you're better off leaving this on this scale than going to this scale. That's, that's another point to make. If you're doing 200 watts, you're still probably better off here. If you're doing 300 watts, and obviously it goes without saying, you need to go to 2000 watt scale. So use what is necessary for the task at hand. So we're gonna put this radio off to sideband. And on this radio, I have it set for like a full 12 watts. I really didn't want any more than that because I, I don't need it. So on the peak circuit here, we can see that it's about 12 watts, maybe just slightly more. And uh, every time I talk, you know, we're getting a good deflection. Uh, we're not seeing really any reflect power at all. So that's a good sign. And everything is happy. The radio's just chugging along, no problem. So we'll go over to the 200 watt scale just because. And again, it's not gonna be as accurate, but it will measure power. So as we, as we talk, you can clearly see now that that uh, scale there where the where it says 100 that's 10 watts so it is going slightly over which would tell us that it's about 12 watts or so so there you have it um i'll give you guys some quick measurements because i know here it's in metric and uh, we don't necessarily use that off the top of our head if you're going to use your own wall wart power supply keep the output between 9 and 14 volts dc and 200 milliamps of current that's the maximum you don't need any more than that if you do you'll probably damage the meter so there's some basic things to keep in mind but let me get my ruler out and we'll take a couple quick measurements okay so here's our measurements in inches so length seven and a quarter width four and a half height four and three quarters so it's a decent size and uh, I'll show you guys how much it weighs really quick here too for those that might be wondering because you know sometimes you want to put stuff on top of stuff and if you're using heavier coax and stuff sometimes you'll get a pulling effect so um, let me let me get this situated okay so she weighs about two pounds so it's not super super heavy it's obviously not as heavy as one of these but you know it does have some little feet on the bottom little like stopping feet obviously if you wanted something different you could actually put like velcro on these probably i was thinking put like a little velcro velcro strip there or something like that and then put something down where you wanted to put this and that would help keep it kind of sitting where you wanted it to there's ways to do that some two-sided tape or something if there was forever whatever reason like you didn't want it to flop around because i know some guys use like 400 type cable or rg213 if you're gonna put this near equipment or something like that and you got something maybe up against it on both sides and you don't have to worry about that it just depends on how you have your shack set up so that's it this is the uh, tx 101a it's good from 1.6 to 60 megahertz and it reads in 2200 and 2000 let me know what you think i'll get these on my website as soon as possible 73